Hi Lily, we are live with Sonali yes. Devnani. Thank you, thank you, Janvi. Very glad yeah, to be so here. First of all, yeah. So first of all, to everyone here, happy seventy-five years of Independence Day to everyone. Happy Independence Day. Wish everybody the same. I am missing my home country the most today. Oh. <laughs> We're glad to have this live one, especially on the Independence Day, though. I am very, very glad to be here. It's been a while since I've gone live, and what better than a platform yeah. like this? Exactly. So, first of all, I'll start this live with introducing Sonali Devnani, ma'am. So they say that a picture speaks thousand words, but Sonali Devnani's pictures conveys a thousand emotions. Human portraits being her speciality, with each snapshot she brings out the inner glow of the subject's face, enumerating things that are often overlooked. So through her work, she brings brings to light a specific aspect to the subject's life, and many so for a social cause like her award winning uh, award winning film, Addicted Innocence, which focused on the problem of abandoned and abused underage children dealing with drug rehabilitation on the streets of New Delhi. So, ma'am, last year's talk was so good. Like I actually learned. Like how photography is like the core to capture humanity, and how you specialize in photo portrait photography. So and uh, so we want to know. We are keen to know what you have in store for us this year. Well, it's been a difficult year, but uh, you know that doesn't stop us from doing the work that we are meant to. In fact, in difficult times, there's much more work that needs to be portrayed and showed to the audience who were locked up at home. uh so i did take a trip down uh, to the very beautiful state of rajasthan and decided to explore a little bit more and while i was exploring and filming uh i realized there was an issue that needed to be highlighted um i'm sure we're going to be watching the video for people to know more about what i've done uh it's about the artists in jaisalmer uh, a small city in rajasthan and artists from this state are uh, very very talented and some kind of folk and culture that we might not see in a few years and for me to preserve this culture is now my utmost responsibility so a short video highlighting issues and what i'm going to do about it so let's let let people watch the video and then we'll see what everyone yeah, has to video. say yeah The golden city of Jaisalmer attracted millions of tourists every year. The royal state of Rajasthan, where Indian folk and culture is preserved and showcased to their guests. Everything changed in the year 2020. The streets were empty, tour buses parked, the deserts lonely, hotels shut their doors, and our talented artists lost their livelihood. culture that was passed down generations with the pandemic a single meal such a struggle how will they pass this tradition down to their children mukesh who is one of the puppeteers in jaisalmer learned this art from his grandfather and father wo hum chale jate the hotel mein to hotel wale de dete the koi 500 rupees de deta tha koi 1000 rupees de deta tha तो उनसे हमारा काम चलता था लेकिन जब से ये कोविड आया है तब से हमारी खाने पीने के वादे पड़ गए कुछ भी नहीं है कि जैसे प्रोग्राम आते थे तो अब वो आना बंद हो गए इमरान हैज बीन डूइंग मैजिक शोज विद हिज फादर एवर सिंस ही वाज अ चाइल्ड ये पकड़ लीजिए ऐसे बोलो भाजी को ले भाजी को ले क्या दोस बोस अंतरो अंतरो मंतरो मंतरो के कोरोना वायरस के वजह से सब होटलें वगैरह बंद हैं तो इसलिए अपना रोड वोड पे गुजारा करके टाइम पास करके अपनी फैमिली का पैट पालन करते हैं महरून खान एंड हिज फैमिली हु आर ऑल म्यूजिशियंस प्राउडली कैरी देयर हेरिटेज फॉरवर्ड हम नहीं चाहते कि ऐसा साल या ऐसा समय किसी में आए किसी के साथ ऐसा हो सबके साथ हुआ हम समझते हैं लेकिन सबसे ज़्यादा जो असर पड़ा है हम पे पड़ा है 
क्योंकि मैंने पहले आपको बताया इधर एक सौ बीस पच्चीस होटलें हैं उसी के ऊपर हमारा ये रोजी रोटी है उसमें हम आते हैं अगर उसमें टूरिस्ट नहीं आएंगे तो हमारा गुजारा कैसे चलेगा राजस्थानी फोक म्यूजिक ऑल सच एन इंटेग्रल पार्ट ऑफ आर इंडियन कल्चर नाउ दीज आर्टिस्ट एंड देयर लाइवलीहुड्स डैंगलिंग ऑन द स्ट्रिंग्स ऑफ फेट नो लॉन्गर इन द हैंड्स अ परफॉर्मर विदाउट हिज ऑडियंस इज इनकम्प्लीट सो वॉट इफ वी कॉन्ट ट्रेवल वी कैन सर्टनली वॉच दैम ऑन अ डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म and help these artists in their time of need i look forward to all the support once this online performance is launched wow there was such an enlightening piece i was actually dancing in the folk music i got yes. so involved in it i agree with you it's amazing yeah. and um, yep it's uh, hashtag #save our culture that's what you know the hashtag is i want i want people to realize how important it is that maybe in 10 or 15 years we won't see this because they are suffering so much right now that they might not want to pass this down to their children uh so it's it's a very small effort from my side uh we're going to have an online show a digital show i will be having all the details out soon uh but i'm really happy to share this with uh, all our audience here before it's even got on to the mainstream social media and it's it's such an important like the indie culture it's so important like it has to be the crux of the indian culture so it's yep. important for us as like we are competent individuals to put it out and help these people out as much as we can right it's community for community right it's it's people exactly. who are going to help yeah. people no one's no one out of the blue is going to come and i really hope that uh, they were always appreciated by foreign tourists when they were performing for them uh for us uh, for a lot of us indians we've seen so much of it that we kind of forget that uh, this is beautiful so i think we, we need to come people. together yeah we need to come together as a community as a society right now to help these uh to help all the the art and our culture that we have in our country which should be should be very proud of um so yes if any anyone has any questions for this i'm very happy to take it um i wait for all of that until then uh, yeah jan me anything that you have to say yeah so can we start with the q and a then sure so everyone please start coming yeah like any questions you want to ask ma'am please go ahead and put it in the comments So wow we have a first question from Chetanya he's asking how do you think are some ways we can help out these artisans um so people like the puppeteer that we saw uh, they make puppets as well so apart from doing their performances they make their puppets at home and they would take it to uh, you know they would take it to their performances and people who were watching it would buy them that was another source of income for them uh so i think you know ma- making sure that we have an online platform for them as well because a lot of them do not even have internet connectivity or That's don't even have data on their phones so i think the i think getting them on a digital platform where they can sell uh all of this yeah. they you know the it's it's very very important because then they don't have to depend on donations or charity you know they can be working and they can be making their money uh so puppeteers can do that how about singers you know singers dancers how how do you how do you get them to uh do, you know like we are very lucky we have worked from home right so a lot of us was are studying from home are working from home how do these people work from home so i think it's a concept that's going to be very new to them and we'll have to find ways to get this to work and you as a photographer have taken this opportunity that's really really great 
I mean, I'm very touched that I have got this opportunity. Uh, spending yeah. time with them, understanding their lives. Uh, as a photographer, I mean, I did go in to shoot a documentary, but there's so much to photograph as well that I've missed out on, which I would really want to go back and do it. I've spent a lot of time with them. Uh, I, I would love to see how, you know, the younger generation of our country comes forward and tries to help them and tries to save this culture that we need to keep on going. Otherwise, we're, we're going to lose all of this very, very no, soon. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And Rajasthan is kind of like a place where you, well, this community is entirely so intensely powerful, right? Like Rajasthan yeah, I think, is one of those. I think a lot of, yeah, I mean, I think every state in our country is is very cultural. There's a lot of history behind mm -hmm. things that happen. It could be from a painting yeah. to anything. Uh, but definitely, this is one of the most culture-rich states that I have visited. And there's so much that they have. Uh, like you said, you were dancing with the music. I'm sure a lot of them yeah. were doing too. <laughs> definitely. So, like, we are, uh, like, triple ID Bangalore students. Like, there are several students out there. So, how do you think we as students can contribute in this, take part in helping out these really, really great artists? So, like I said, the puppeteers are selling their puppets. You know, you guys are all tech students. Y'all are all really, really, uh, you know, in this. Yes, y'all are. And, you know, maybe making an app that brings Ooh. together artists, uh, mm -hmm. selling their items, and then coordinating with them. I think that's what they need, right? They need okay. the technically forward people to come and help them so that they don't have to worry about that part. They they concentrate on what they are best at. Uh, so exactly. I think we need to, I think everyone needs to learn uh, and use their resources that they have to the maximum to help each other. Yeah. And we as a medium, students can act as a medium for the world Definitely. and the artists to showcase that. Yeah. Definitely. So that would be my suggestion. Uh, apart from that, you know, spreading the word for people to know that something like that is going to happen, that there's going to be an online show where you buy a ticket and... Uh, you you know you when you buy a ticket all the proceeds are going towards them so that they can exactly. at least be comfortable for some time until this pandemic mm -hmm. is getting you know until the tourism starts again and we're getting a, yeah. they're getting a footing again and they'll get the motivation also oh okay i have some money i'll start uh, slowly yes. slowly picking up and yeah right right so we have some do we have some questions yeah, we have more. Oh, next one from Satvik Bhatt. So he's asked, in what way can we ensure work security for these artists? Similarly, like I said, um, again, uh, for the singers, you know, maybe having a platform where they can be coming online and performing live for you, maybe every month, and a certain amount of money goes to them for doing that show. Uh, we really have been lucky that we've got all the resources over here. So I think that kind of security is just what these artists need. They Right now, they need to know that they're still very talented and that they shouldn't be giving up right now. And for them not to give up, we have to instill hope on them, right? So I think exactly. the only security that they need right now is financial so that they can just survive. Maybe it's just basic needs being met so that they can be okay until we come back to being normal or near normal. Yeah. Oh, we I, have, I think we have a... Like previously. Yeah. So Arhant Arora has another question. What would you say is the most important aspect in creating a film? Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. Exactly, exactly what, uh, like you said, right? A photo mm. talks a thousand emotions, a hundred emotions. Exactly. I think connecting with your subject. Uh, where mm -hmm. I feel their problem is my problem. For me to to actually understand the the deep rooted problem they have or what they are going through is what I can how I'm going to shoot it. Uh, if I'm not understanding it myself and I'm only watching it from the outer surface, I don't think I'm going to be doing justice to showing you what I felt. So it's exactly that. I, I Just spending a lot of time with your subjects, understanding the story really well. And I would definitely say that scripting it, kind of knowing an order mm -hmm. of how you want to put things together and how you're going to touch your uh, 
uh, viewer's emotion as well. So it's it's a game of emotions that you're playing, right? It's understanding the emotion of the subject, but it's yeah. also being understanding towards the emotion of what the viewer is going to feel. Um, yeah. So I think getting getting all these emotions together is what a filmmaker has to do. Yeah. And that's the most important aspect. Uh, yes, it was. So I pretty much I really strongly believe in it. And only if you're really passionate about something are you going to get deeply into it. Uh, otherwise, yeah. if it's not of any interest to you, you're always going to just mm -hmm. skim it from the surface. Um, yeah. And that and that what that's what it is. Yeah. That, that's a really good answer. So we have someone called KM007, okay. How do you find the perfect moment to capture a picture? That's a good one, again. Some moments are fleeting moments uh, and I don't have to find them. They're already there. Mm -hmm. uh, while some moments you have to wait around for. Um, mm -hmm. I, I usually, uh, let's say if I'm walking around and I, I see a priest, okay, who is uh, performing his or you know anyone who's performing their puja or some religious kind of offering and everything uh when they're doing it there's a lot there's a lot of again there's there's a lot that that's going on right in in terms of physical activity in terms mm -hmm. of yeah. in terms emotion. of emotion as well uh so waiting around to find that moment so uh you know when we do the surya namaskar right like a lot of people go in the morning and when the sun has just risen and they have sun salutation right a lot of them do the surya namaskar a lot of them just fold their hands and they're looking at it uh waiting for that moment because i know he's going to be now praying to the sun just just being in that right yeah. angle with the you know i do all my technical uh abilities to my camera i'm fiddling with all of it and i'm just waiting so i think waiting around for it is uh mm. patience is key Patience, yeah. Patience is always the key to be honest. <laughs> For anything. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a long question. Okay, we have Karan Veer Singh. I dream to go to Europe and want to take abstract photos and landscapes, but I can't. So how much big of a hurdle is traveling to different places is for professional photographers? That's a good one. Ah. Uh... I mean, travel is always hard, right? But don't we wish that someone paid for our travel and we just took a holiday? I mean, everyone <laughs> loves paid holidays. Um, it's it's always very, very difficult. You know, budgets are always hard. I mean, someone something like mm -hmm. Europe is going to cost you a lot of money. Uh, finding, getting collaborations, I would say. I mean, it's definitely a very big hurdle, right? It, it is. But getting collaborations, so working with travel companies, uh, working with hotels who would probably give you um this pointer i think ma'am just went off for a second uh, ma'am am i audible to you am i audible ma'am ma'am am i audible Okay, so I think there's some connection difficulty from Ma'am's end, probably. Okay. Okay, so let's. Uh, she's saying that she, her laptop crashed. So. So. Okay, so we have someone else from our team to join in for her. Okay, so here is Vijay, one of my batch. Yeah. Ones. For the day. So, oh, so I guess we can take this time to explain the rules of the contest, maybe. And also, we have a very special announcement we'd like to make. So, until Sonali comes back, maybe I can explain that. And, oh, she's back. Oh, she's back. So, yes, I guess yes. we have to leave the spoilers for later. Sorry. Yes. I don't know. My laptop <laughs> crashed, guys. It's very, very suddenly. So, I am back. Sorry for the interruption. No problem. It happens with everything. Right. I know. All right. Can everyone see me? Yes. Well, what's the next yeah, question? Perfect. All right. So, yes. So I think collaborating with uh, with these different companies and getting on your dream trip is what you need. It's a lot of work and you'll get there, but uh, it will happen. 
Yes, yes. If I firstly I want to go to Europe to uh, I know me too. I hope COVID allows me to. <laughs> All right. So, can you have the next question? Oh, okay, we have someone called Ashish Katredi. He's asking, mm-hmm. what advice would you give for people who are just starting out in photography? I guess it's a nice question. Yeah. Uh, there were there. There's a lot of hurdles that come, right? One is hmm. you keep looking at your photos and you're like, I'm not good enough. Uh, and we need to stop comparing. So anyone who's just beginning photography, I would say. stop comparing to the ones who've given a lot of time into it so that you don't get disappointed uh learning from others is very very important but um uh, mimicking others is not right so you cannot be copying someone else's style you have to make your own style and for creating your own style of photography you have to be giving it a lot of time you have to be practicing sadly this is not the right time to say that go out and explore and travel uh because we're amidst uh you know a pandemic but i would say you know we have opportunities every single day when we're trying to shoot it could be just around your home area in quiet places so just you know go being at it and not feeling disappointed learning from people yourself. who can teach you yes learning from people trying different styles understanding what suits you the best what is it that you're enjoying the best um gearing up with your editing skills all of this is such a big package of photography right it's not only from the shot that you've taken it's a lot to do with your edit knowing your technical abilities that you have with the camera so i would say um a lot of work goes into it so don't get disappointed and keep mm-hmm. at it because that's exactly how i felt when i started everyone is a beginner at some point uh, yeah. we just get better at it and uh, don't be scared to say that you have a style or don't i i am very proud of my style if someone tells me that oh all your pictures do have a certain element to it and i said yeah that's probably my signature style so don't that be scared to think yeah don't be scared that you're being boring or being because in a, mm-hmm. in a couple of years that's going to be your signature style like when i was in first year of my college when i just came to college i was so happy i was bent on clicking so many pictures so yeah yes. it's it's more important of how you want to describe yourself through those pictures i guess correct yeah so oh one more question from km007 what was the most interesting concept you have worked on nice uh So photography wise and videography wise I have uh, two I mean a lot of concept that I worked on very interesting but <laughs> photography wise I worked on a concept that uh, actually was a commercial shoot which was for a jeweler oh, wow. in in Calcutta and uh, it was very very expensive jewelry um and usually when we see jewelry hoardings on you know advertisements they're very pretty looking models uh, perfect makeup great clothing amazing light and awesome and awesome jewelry obviously because you're trying to sell it um and i said why is perfection um such a big thing here uh why don't we so it was rajasthani jewelry again it was jewelry that was made oh, wow. in the state of rajasthan or you know it was what the royal king queen uh, queens wore so i said why not use models who are tribal girls from Rajasthan oh, so i used i used these raw looking tribal girls no makeup nothing in their natural form wearing oh. this jewelry uh so yeah. to me that was a very very interesting concept and actually uh the jeweler won uh the best uh, marketing concept of the year award as well for it. so it was it was amazing yeah. thank you yeah. um in terms of videography uh the concepts that i've worked on which were very interesting was <coughs> a documentary film of mine that has not been completed yet yet because of covid was manual scavenging manual scavenging is when the people who go into sewers to clean um sewers mm-hmm. and how difficult their lives were so for me that concept of shooting that 
uh, and making it interesting to the viewers, not 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 grossing the viewer out. And how do you show it? Was a very very interesting concept that I worked on as well. Basically, putting uh, the reality course, forward in any way. Possible. Putting the reality forward, but in such a way that no one is feeling disgusted looking at people yeah. cleaning the gutters and and feeling like yeah. what is it? So uh, that was a very very interesting uh, concept which hasn't been completed yet mm-hmm. because of the pandemic. But I hope to show it to you guys soon. Yeah. So where can we see all of this? Like the previous years' work? Do you have any? So platform? addicted. Of course, addicted innocence. You know, as as filmmakers, we always try to sell our film, and which is why we don't release it on social media mm-hmm. platforms. But eventually, now there are so many such platforms where it's pay per view. So you know, a mm-hmm. filmmaker makes takes a lot of effort to make a film. So we obviously mm-hmm. want to be paid for and rewarded for what we've done yeah. and all the effort we've done. Uh, so yeah, soon I'll be on a pay per view where people will be able to pay a, a very nominal amount of money and watch the film. That's great. That's great going, ma'am. That's really great. Yeah. So can you have the next question? Oh, that's a really creative username. Tensile Fusion asks, which is the most picturesque location you have been to, or rather, the best photography location you have explored? All right, so it's a picturistic location that I have been to, and the best photography uh, location I have explored. Um, there are plenty, of course. Um, <laughs> the most picturistic to me uh, was Bhutan. I think it was gorgeous. Uh, Morocco. I think Morocco was very picturistic as well, uh, where you see deserts on one side and snow-capped mountains on the other which was very very interesting to me yeah. yeah um what is the most you know exotic location again i could say is uh in myanmar uh, a very small tribal mountainous village and i had to travel about 12 to 14 hours to even get there and i think the entire journey oh. was so interesting meeting those people was so interesting that it made yeah. that it made the made the whole you know, experience very, very interesting. So sometimes it's also yeah. not about not about how beautiful the place is. For me, it's uh, how amazing the people are as well that make it exactly. a very great experience. Yeah. I mean, as a yeah. portrait photographer, that is important to me. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay, so we have next is Vedahi Mehta. How to start a conversation with people on street while clicking the portrait? Yeah, this is... I think this is the most important thing uh, that a, a portrait photographer at least should know about clicking because until you haven't established that relationship, no one is going to let you take a picture. It's almost like if you guys, you know, you were somewhere and someone just comes and has a camera and tuck, 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 <laughs> going on, and you, you'll want to no, slap no, no. that person and say, dude, what are you doing? Right. Uh, so exactly. definitely I do. I do uh, strike up a conversation. I do talk to them. Uh, the mm-hmm. simplest is compliment someone right i think uh, yeah. human uh, i think all human beings work like that everyone likes being appreciated mm. uh so yeah. it could be you know it could be anyone sitting there and i say you know aap itne achhe lag rahe hain kitni bahut acha rang pehna hai or you know you, mm. you know you smile very beautifully or your eyes are just gorgeous you know stuff like that just take an interest yeah. in their life or anything that they're doing as well. And then I start from there. And then I tell them about myself. And why am I with a camera? And I am not going to be taking a photo and selling it. And you know that's the kind of stuff people have in their minds. So just making them comfortable. Um, and uh, I always make this connection. It's like when a you know, when a beautiful girl is sitting in a bar. And a boy wants to strike conversation uh, with him. How does he start? So the first thing is eye contact. Right? Even before you start mm-hmm. like bombarding a person, it's like you make that eye yeah. contact. The person sees you, notices you, and that's when you go in and, and start the conversation. Yeah, and eye so, contact is like the initial, like the comfort exactly. level that gets defined by yeah. that thing. Yeah. And I, I think in your film also... In by you. Yeah. Yeah, true. And in your film also, we, you could, I could literally feel the authenticity you had when you were telling about the artists and when artists were describing themselves like they were actually yes. putting themselves forward their miseries or any of the emotion that they want us to feel as viewers so i guess that is that is like i said right the connection to the to the subject and then the connection yeah. to the viewer right so i'm very happy that yeah. you're saying something like that that you felt the emotion that's what you need exactly. that's what makes us yeah. successful as as directors or cameramen or women who are mm-hmm. shooting it right 
go. Next question. Okay, we have a question from Vijay Sahani. How has photography, how has photography changed during this pandemic? Uh, yeah. where, where it's should changed. We start? It's, <laughs> it's not the same. I mean, I can definitely tell you that it's not the same. I was shooting in February to mm -hmm. April. I was very lucky to be in India and travel and do oh. all of it. But it didn't feel the same. It, it really did not feel the same. You were scared uh, being close to a person, right? Like this mm -hmm. entire social distancing as human beings, we're not supposed to be doing this. Uh, you know, we're in this big wide world and we're supposed to know each other and, and embrace each other and help each other. And everything has changed. Um, there's still so much to talk about. Uh, it has changed. It is, it's become more difficult to capture emotions. Smiles have been muffled by masks. Uh, very few people smile with their eyes. Finding yeah. that spark is what we keep looking for. But we cannot stop now because there's so much to still mm. talk about. There's, there's so many issues okay. that people are facing during this pandemic no. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in that you know being double masked and in the heat and walking around and all of that all those hurdles are coming in photography right now you know your belly you're like fogging up your camera is fogging up everything is <laughs> it's so hard yeah. I, I get that uh but we can't stop yet because we have to still tell stories about this pandemic and 10 years down the line when we are going to be seeing these photos of people in yeah. masks and smiling through their eyes and difficult emotions i think we're all going to look at it and say you know, wow, well Ooh, done. That was a time. Yeah. We, we've documented that something that is so historical. I mean, people are going to be looking back after 100 years and talking about COVID, about us going through it. So we have mm -hmm. to have pictures of this. We have to document this. So that's a new emotions, new ways of expressing them. So I guess that's what yeah. this pandemic has brought on to us. <laughs> yeah. So next question, okay. We have Sri Vishnu Rajgopal asking, does professional photography still necessarily require equipment like DSLRs? How has the uh, advent of mobile photography affected the landscape of photography? It has changed a lot, right? Because uh, <laughs> when we take a photo with the DSLR, uh, not only have we dedicated a lot of time in understanding how a camera works uh, or what we like to shoot, it's so easy for a person just to take out a mobile photo and, and, and click, right? It's, it's a click, snapshot. Yeah. I always say, yeah. I always say that when I'm with the DSLR, I feel like I'm thinking much more about the image of how I want to make it. What do I want to show in it? What's what's the color tones going to be like? What's the exposure going to be like? There's so much more that I think about it. But when we just take that little thing that's always in our hands nowadays and, and we click it, am I making the effort to click it? It's become so easy, right? And people have been taking this easy way out and... Uh, iPhones take very good photos. OnePlus takes very good photos. Why do we need DSLR cameras? Uh, people who have been in film, uh, you know, when they, they actually used to have the film photography, uh, mm -hmm. hate the digital photography because we are click, 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 and there's so much going on. Why? Why are we wasting so many? We need to take that effort to make that one image. So I think mobile photography has made photographers lazier because we're not <laughs> thinking about the photo. We're just clicking it and it's a snapshot. And... Uh, I, I would still always want to go with uh, equipment like DSLRs. Of course, you don't need the fanciest of cameras to, uh, to take simple, nice photos. You can take great photos with a mobile if it's well thought of. If there's a story to tell in it. If there, is, um, if there is the composition is great. Technically, you've made an effort to do it. Uh, we saw in our contest, we saw very nice exactly. mobile yeah, shots as well. Say, right? So I'm not saying that shooting with a mobile and having an expensive DSLR makes you a photographer. No, it doesn't. But being a mobile photographer doesn't mean just taking snapshots just because you have something in your hands. Just making that image and taking the time behind making that image is more important. Exactly. The words the words are great. Yeah. Any other next comment? Uh, okay. Someone is asking, how safe is it to take photography as career option in India? <laughs> Uh, it's I, I get this question a lot, right? Uh, and I'm I'm saying that it is it is a, it is a challenge. But don't we have competition in every career we take, right? There is exactly. it's always yeah. difficult. Of course, being a photographer, getting recognized, and being up there takes forever. Mm. I get that. You know, I'm sure 
Dabu Ratnani, who's a famous Bollywood photographer, uh, would say that as well. He had he must have gone through a lot and stuff like that. So, um, and a very few genres of photography actually make money, right? So the wedding genre, the uh, fashion genre, the product, and now you know e-commerce. So there are certain genres of photography that make a lot of money, and they are always needed. Uh, but there's there's the travel photographer, and how does he make money, right? By selling the images. So, so you have to be you have to be very smart in choosing what genre that you're doing, or maybe you can for passion do your travel photography, sell your photos, uh, you know, stock images, etc., etc., and still make money from the genres that are making the money. Uh, yeah. So, like every career in the world, it's mm -hmm. always a challenge. There's always competition. There are a lot of people in it. Uh, technology keeps changing. You know, with photography, I think that has a lot to do as well. You know, cameras are changing. Technology is changing. Do we, do we always have the money to keep buying and updating ourselves, right? Uh, so, it is It is a difficult, it is challenging, but um, it's not impossible. Yeah, we as individuals have to work on it, right? If that's our career option, we have to push yes. ourselves as well as we can. Yeah. So can we have the next question? Oh, Karen Weising again. He asks, editing is really important part of a photo. Not always a photo is the way we want it to be. Contrast and saturation are always important. Yeah, he's right. Yes and no. Yes and no. I, I would say... Uh, I always say editing is a very personal process. It's like you're painting, right? It's it's editing uh -huh. is like painting. Uh, what you how you want to show it, you know. So if I want to show moody tones, I edit it in a certain it's manner. But if I want it to be, if I want it to be bright, I I I make it that way, right? Uh, so what do you recommend for editing? I would say um, I use. I'm not. I'm. A, I'm very technically disabled, to be very honest, which is why you can see my computer has crashed. Uh, but I would say, I would say, uh, Lightroom for me is the best. It's the easiest. Uh, it's simple. There's not much to understand in that. And uh, yeah, so for me, Lightroom and my laptop has finally come back to life. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. So next question. Oh, Shri Tripathi is asking, how do you look at something and realize this is the perfect moment for a photo that will be able to be telling an interesting story? I want to learn that skill. How do you look at something and realize it's the perfect moment for a photo that will be able to tell an interesting I want to learn that skill. No, it's not every photo that I click is the perfect moment, right? But that doesn't mean I don't click it, correct? Uh, sometimes the, the moment is not perfect. I would have taken someone... And, uh, but that story that that person had is very compelling. So I, I will still want to take that photo because I want everyone to hear that person's story. Uh, so, yeah, not every photo that I've taken is interesting. Not every photo that I've uh, shot until date has a story as well. Um, you will recognize, you will recognize when people open up, uh, when they're talking about things. And when I find a character that is interesting, I think I don't leave that character. I, I stand there for hours. Hours because I feel that I want that person to become so comfortable that I'm almost invisible. And even if that person is not talking to me and when I'm shooting, I'm getting the most real emotions of like ever. So once I find someone who's opened up to me, whose story is very compelling, I've taken an interest in it. He's or she is taking an interest in me. And it's comfortable enough, I just stay there hours and hours. And that's the skill that you want to learn. Basically, life behind the lens and in front of the lens. That's what yeah. connects. Yeah. So, can we have last of the question? Oh, Hungry Pigeon. Okay. How do you find good media? Well, <laughs> not all media is good, right? I, I get mm -hmm. that. Um, I get, I understand how people... Uh, Sadly, you know, I mean, I was very happy when social media came, when we all photographers found a platform to share our images and everything. But suddenly it's all diluting, right? It's it's become it's becoming a rat race. Everything is becoming about the number of followers, the number of likes. What is it, you know, having this fan club thing that's going on. Everyone wants mm -hmm. to be, be a photographer known and stuff like that. 
uh, it's your work that's going to be known number one so uh, you you continue to do work that is great doesn't matter if you are not getting the amount of likes so you don't have the amount of followers i i believe that good work will find the good audience right it's it's mm. it's like a you know it's that effect that magnet effect great work yeah. will find uh how do you find good media it's it's diluted social media has just so much going on so much going on i mean i would be scared to even about my 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 video that i'm going to be putting up and selling these yeah. you know a concert and everything are people going to find will will they even you know in this large uh content database that we have will people yeah. even notice me and we get lost hmm. uh yeah. we become invisible I, at a point Yeah and I feel media for a cause is what we have to work towards now. I mean we're making content, we're making great images. Uh we're making people aware of a lot of places that we visited and we want them to visit and you know creating all this information. Uh but I feel like helping each other out with the with the use of media is what a lot more people need to do. If if for, if in the world one person could help one other person I don't think we would have unhappy people because everyone would be looking after someone. And so in this I think time, yeah. time, like we as humans need that kind, need that comfort from others. So it's it's really compelling. That's true. Yeah. So, so I guess I'm going to log in. Question. I'm going to yeah, I'm going to log in from my laptop uh, uh, just because this is because because because. Oh, so I'll give you a second. Yeah. I'm back. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's better. That's better. So I guess uh that was the last question. We had such an amazing Q&A with you. I think that really helped Thank you. the audience explore different the latest trends in photography, the life behind the lens. So, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for such an insightful session, ma'am. So, uh Thanks, yeah. Johan. Yeah. I think we're going to be looking at uh Yeah the for, finally it's time for the photography contest so drum roll so now Amazing. there will be a small countdown and okay so i'll take a leave i'll hand over the stage to vijay and sonali ma'am so have a hello so it's one of the most anticipated times of this month it's independence day uh, and the yes. theme is freedom all is the freedom Let's see who's through the lens. Colors of freedom. I think uh, we saw a lot of nice images. I think uh, I really liked a lot of them, and uh, we took some effort going through each and every one of them, and indeed, indeed. marking them. And uh, so I'm sure Vijay, you enjoyed it as well. Uh, uh, yeah, and learned a bit of photography as well while you did this. it was it was actually a surreal experience because we got more than 50 photos by the way and that is quite a big achievement to sit and judge them and also all of the 50 were amazing like it was so hard to choose between them so yeah we didn't try and keep pinky pinky but that was the next thing actually it was that close to be fair so so yeah so with that in mind i guess let's start uh, the slides so as you can see this is the first slide of course right so uh, what we plan to do is we selected a few like around 10 or so of the best photos and we'd like to show it to you so uh you might uh, like we realize that there was a write up that was optional so if the write up is there it will come on the left hand side otherwise it will come on the right hand side so i would just put the first one here so can you uh, like it's not is it possible for you to say why you like this photo so much i think everyone like this photo a lot you know uh so the theme of our independence day photography contest was uh freedom through our lens right uh to mm-hmm. see someone who's actually lost all his freedom his freedom to walk his freedom to run his freedom to be normal and still seeing how he is using his freedom with the help of of those two sticks that are supporting him and and still exploring still wanting to go for that walk on that very beautiful ambient surreal empty road uh to me this was this was great um it was the irony of things but uh, yeah i i think this image spoke uh, a lot there was there's a lot of emotion to it uh it actually made us realize how much freedom we have 
for being normal and not having any kind of handicap and how much we were able mm-hmm. to do it uh so yeah. for me it expressed emotion in many many different ways and i'm sure everyone who's watching it feels the same about this image um so yes this was this was my top favorite uh, japan krishna life with clipped wings definitely but freedom yet there yes i think it it wholeheartedly ties up with the theme as well if if something speaks freedom this is what it is no yeah? it is the epitome of freedom in my eyes okay so as you can see yeah, like not just yeah. us even the weather is free and it's hard to rain so i guess i'll close over until then i'll leave all of you to marvel at the next photo submitted by none other than mr ahmed khan himself ahmed khan yeah ahmed all khan very right. uh, good i think uh, i think freedom here i mean it's it's you see everything the kids having such a great time uh we all are looking for freedom like that right now you know want to just jump off a cliff cliff into that water great blue skies and you know the motion of that little boy jumping all of them waiting for him um, it was a great you know a moment that was captured very perfectly with the right timing everything being uh, technically great about this image from the colors to the contrast and so yeah this was this was uh, one of my top favorites as well yeah it's really a good photo and i think even the way the hands are of the people in the water right it almost looks like they're running to catch him that like they try to embrace freedom pretty good yes. okay so this was a really nice picture and uh, just just yes, in case you wanted the timing, the timing of the photo was amazing someone commented yeah if yeah, the people in chat also like it that's always great to see timing of the photo yeah, yeah. i guess it's it's a, it's an art of patience to be fair so yes so just in case people are wondering in the chat no this is not order the first one let's it not necessarily in order let's say that no spoilers uh, but these are the best ones in no particular order so this is the next one um, yeah Th- this one is awesome meghna agarwal i i really like this photo as well right um, yeah. again painting of free birds with a caged bird and just look at at the way uh, the person has composed the picture right like this is what i yeah. meant when we do mobile photography that we don't take you know we don't make the effort to compose it and i think so perfectly and i think she's very very lucky that she got that parrot sitting right next to the bird that's on the back of that wall and it's placed so well and just everything falling in a line almost like it's painted and the parrot has been asked to you know sit there in that cage uh so yes again uh two senses of freedom over here yeah um uh, the painting on the wall is showing freedom and and that bird in the cage is not um so some people are very lucky to be free while others aren't so i think it was a great great picture of here freedom caught very very well correct normally irony is seen in a negative sense in some way but here you can see how positive it is and how expressive it is and also we also heard some questions from a guy called a uh, could be a guy could be a girl called hungry pigeon in the chat i'm sure he or she would be really proud that their friend is there on this team very nice thanks nice anna uh, next we have this <laughs> next we have this picture this Thank is you. my favorite personally this one yeah then we did beauty what is quite like they call it um uh, again you know you can see the lines i mean technically if i have to talk about the photo the lines uh the, the four kids over there diagonally you know opposite exactly opposite it who's jumping with great motion and watching him and all of it uh so yeah freedom anything in motion uh amplifies freedom and right there we have that moment correct yeah and also the write up says he was doing the super rishi thing just for fun and just for joy that's pretty that's a whole complete write up in itself to be fair <laughs> the freedom to do whatever you want for fun yeah <laughs> okay so i guess that's what school students feel like when they got internal choice but okay uh, this is the next one yeah This one is bang on the theme. They got the day correct. They got to, the time correct. It's perfect. 
<laughs> yeah, I think uh, we should be very lucky to have, uh, you know, Gandhiji in this picture, and which is why we're free. So I think there you're <laughs> expressing freedom automatically. Uh, a lot of people forget how and why we've got freedom. You know, I think 74, 75 years down into freedom, we've actually forgotten how much of a fight was put in for us to be in a position like that. I think people are now uh, understanding freedom much more because of COVID when their freedom was pulled back. So I think we're kind of realizing how much was put in by people uh, like Gandhiji for us to be in the position that we are. So it's a great picture, not forgetting the freedom fighters because of who we got freedom. And it's amazing because uh, you can, Vijay, you can read the write up of how this photo was captured, which is even yeah. more interesting. Yeah, it's moments like these, like we would have seen so many auto rickshaws and so many walls, but the intersection of the two and in such a context, and it's just, it's really nice to see how well it's come together. So again, this, 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 um, you know, action uh, has, has waited for that moment uh, and, and expressing his gratitude to his freedom fighter with the colors there, with everything there. I think perfect, perfect timing, amazing image. Yeah. Maybe he got ejected by the previous Ottawa. You know, sometimes it is a good thing. <laughs> the next picture, th this one is also one of my personal favorites because of the way the light has come. So I'll let you know your views on it as well. Yeah, silhouette images that we call them are absolutely beautiful. Dance is the language to express the freedom of life for sure. Uh, I love this image because the light, the light painting that has been done at the back with the use of photography uh, almost looks like, a, like the chakra on our, on our flag, okay. on our tiranga. And, uh, uh, you know, the mudra that she's doing in dance is also perfectly placed. I think everything was gorgeous about this image. Um, and that's why I liked it. Uh, something very, very different. Yeah, I agree. And if we were to have, let's say, a best write-up, this would definitely win. But do we? Don't we? No spoilers. <laughs> we don't know yet. <laughs> we don't know yet. Okay, this is the next one. This is from Arhant. And yeah, this was a really nice photo. And it just goes to show that color isn't a prerequisite to make a really good photo. This one has no color, and yet it gives so much emotion through it. I mean, it's a very strong, like I said, right? We've we've realized that how our freedom has been taken away. So the mask is is what is showing that. Uh, wanting to break free, you know, wanting to express that freedom. Uh, I think his eyes had uh, an amazing emotion, how he's looking forward to his freedom. Uh, I did like this photo. It's, it's not showing freedom exactly, but it's acting what we've missed out with uh so and and it's our current times we we are not exploring and enjoying freedom anymore so perfect very very nice uh great timeliness of the image right Correct. for the pandemic uh, a very well taken photo as well technically the light on the subject uh you know the entire darkness of the subject and all behind the subject and light on the subject uh is giving you a sense of hope uh, and it's like a ray of light that's coming into your life. Yeah, and I spoke what the mouth failed. Really nice head up there. And also Arhan Tharwara himself says lovely. Always nice to know. <laughs> Next we have Vaidehi Mehta. This is a nice picture and a lot of people might not notice the cow in the back, but that adds a lot to this photo. <laughs> So again, the cow is caged. I think it's. I don't think it's. I think it's like you know, tied up to something and is asked to stay there. And the kid is enjoying his leisure with his kite and flying it and everything. It it has a you know. I think kids playing and you know jumping into the water. All of this uh, signifies freedom really, really well. Again, uh, one that doesn't have the freedom and one that does. Um, so I did. I did like this photo. I love the photo. How the light is on that kid. How the person has used light to his advantage. Uh, sorry, to her advantage. Betty. Uh, very, very, very nice image again. Uh, greens always feel very nice to the eyes when we watch photos like that. So definitely happiness and peace. 
Yeah, and it also shows a really nice thing in life that is, it's the small things that make the big change, right? The the addition of the cow there has added so much. Although it's not a small thing, but in any case, it's something that is often overlooked, and that's another, I guess, life lesson from a photo. So let's go to the next one. Yes, this is another one that hungry pigeon might like because it's another bird. So this is by Kanish Kothari. And to be fair, both of this person's photos are so good. We we were so torn. We literally didn't even yeah. knew at the end because both of them were so good. We had to pick one of them. Yeah. So you know, amazing. Yeah, Kanish, great, great timing. Absolutely great timing. The light is just brilliant. The composition of the photo is just amazing. Birds in flight. Uh, are always uh, you know there's always a freedom in fact i had a joke uh that when we were all in lockdown and i used to look up i used to see the birds flying and i'm like you guys and y'all are very lucky y'all didn't have to change y'all are still flying why am i jailed so there you go yeah yeah perfect it's gorgeous correct and that just epitomizes freedom in the truest sense. Uh -huh. right, so I guess I think we have another one. Yeah, we have another one. This is from Hitesh. And um, the I could maybe I'd like to give a bit of context. This was a university fair, not a fair, sorry, fest, a college fest. And this was, I think, in 2020 when at that time, at least, we didn't really have to wear masks and we were in college then. So this was the photo, and it's a really nice photo. What do you think of it? Yeah, I mean, we uh, almost have the colors of a flag, the green and the orange and the blue. Of course, the pinks are there as well. Uh, yeah, no more, you know, there wasn't any social distancing. Everyone was having a great time without being scared of each other. Uh, the motion of uh, the confetti in the air and all of it, uh, celebration and expressing themselves with their hands is raised up is freedom enough. So I did I did like this uh photos And those days will come back. We don't lose hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also I think this ties up nicely to one of the previous questions as well uh, of social media and it being you being like obscure and you being kind of unnoticeable and this is one of the places where it's a good thing. You can do whatever you want. You have the freedom to dance however you want. As long as the next person doesn't record it, that's fine. Right. So that's another uh -huh. thing that you have in our college first. Freedom to dance whatever you want. Next. And yeah, this is an, another photo. And this one was another one of those examples of black and white images having so much emotion uh, conveyed through it. Yeah, I loved I loved this photo as well. I mean, that dog is just gorgeous, uh, jumping up in joy. The the boy watching the dog uh, jumping in joy. It's, it's uh, freedom from both of them. Uh, the boy is exploring. I think into the backpack, and I think he's on a trip. And, and this dog is it, it's a great great photo. Clouds being very beautiful in the background. So yeah, well done, sort of really nice photo. Yeah, amazing. And More it's another one of those things. So you see the thing it's trying to catch in the top part of the image. And I think that could be interpreted as the dog trying to chase freedom and giving us all inspiration to do the same. Again, it's a little things in the photo. Last time it was the cow. This time it's, I don't know what that is, probably something yeah. a cow eats as well. But yeah, nice. Nice detail. KM says, what's the dog's name? I guess you'll have to ask Arab about that. Nice dog though. <laughs> okay, next. Yeah, this photo. Photo is too good. Yep, children do find their freedom in the tiniest of things or the most simplest of things, as you can see. Uh, Vizag Beach, one of the places I do want to visit, found this opportunity to capture their moments of ecstasy and freedom, definitely. Um, we do forget growing up that the simple, simple pleasures of life uh, are the most free to the soul. Uh, and you can see this, this little kid enjoying it, that little kid watching it. Again, children, birds, all of these, uh, freedom through the lens automatically. Um, yeah, so I did, I did last this photo. I mean, technically I would want to see the entire child and his feet, you know, with the waves crashing the feet. I, I would want to see it, but uh, nevertheless, still a very great moment captured. Yeah, amazing, truly really awesome. Okay. Now the big one. 
we need a hype in chat and drum rolls dun 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 who is there who will get it we'll find out fine let's find out now in 3 So okay, so maybe I'll explain the winner structure right now. I like to give you a little bit more of anticipation. So we have three winners, first, second, and third. It was really, it was this close. It was so difficult to judge, and yeah, like huge kudos to everyone who submitted. It was such a hard I time mean, judging. That's always a good. All thing of you are winners. Everyone's yeah. a winner for capturing freedom through your lens. That you were able to capture such great moments. So well done, everybody. Uh, we had a great time looking at the photos. So yes, let's see. Yes, awesome. Yeah, we have some drop rolls in the chat. Sri Ram, yeah, Shashwin, Murli, Manoj, everyone's hyped. Okay, let's see. This is the first one. This is the best. I think a lot of people will agree with me for choosing this, and and uh, I hope you guys like the storytelling image that you see right here. Correct. This is this is the best. I think without any question. Then this. Okay, so we need some hype for the second one now. <laughs> Yes, let's go. Congratulations. Interview with images. I mean, I I do want to congratulate Japan. Well done for uh, you know this seeing this moment. I know someone asked me a question. How do you capture that moment? This is the moment that you wanted, right? An empty road, a, a storytelling image. So well done, Japan. Yeah, well done. Amazing from the whole committee as well. Truly an outstanding image. Okay, the second prize is this picture by Pinkesh. Totally. Congratulations, congratulations, Pinkesh! Great, great image. Get caught the moment in time. Yeah, amazing, very really amazing. And the fact that he was doing the super risky thing for fun, well, you took a super risky photo and it paid off. I mean, this well is is quite deep, eh? So I've seen it, and and definitely he was expressing his freedom to do whatever he wants. Uh, but yeah, very, very nicely captured. The fact that this was taken in Jodhpur as well just brings the whole thing together. Very nice to see. Okay, um, let's go to the third one. Okay, this one, no surprise, the black and white picture by Arhant. yep so what we you know what we don't have right now and how we're trying to break through and get back our freedom so this was uh, that storytelling kind of an image uh, great shot by arhant congratulations to you amazing truly amazing yeah arhant one of our college juniors he'll be really happy so now we have another big spoiler which i was supposed to give but i didn't but it's big spoilers the spoiler is we have two special prizes so some of you who have been paying attention to our instagram we noticed you might notice a big small line somewhere in the middle of some description for you to obfuscate and find out yes we have two special prizes and the first prize is actually we were so torn to choose we felt bad because the fourth photo is also so good we felt that it deserved a nice prize that's exactly what we're going to have tedx to priyati bangar our committee's choice is Donald and Jack. That's a hype. It's there. IMT 2020 ruling. Perhaps, I'm looking yes. forward to seeing it. I don't know. Yes, this is a surprise to you as well. Yes, yes, we didn't tell you. So it's completely surprising, and it is this by Amir Khan. I love this picture. So I'm very, very glad that you guys have chosen this. So perfect. Yeah, perfect. Amazing. Yeah, someone's expressing surprise about special prizes. Yes, there is a special prize, but you won't know what's coming next because there's another one. And this one, I'm not judging it. Sonali is not judging it. None of us here are judging it. You guys are going to judge it. Huh? What? What? How are we going to judge? How are we going to type? Don't worry, we have a poll coming up, and it's people's choice. And we have a poll coming up, and now we're going to give a small delay over here so that we can set up the poll. It. Yes, and the spirit of TEDx is all about communities, and we feel like this is the ideal chance for you guys to showcase your emotion. And you know, I love a good pun. You have to exercise your freedom of speech over here and select the best one. And so we'll take a small delay, and we'll be right back.
Yeah, I guess before that, maybe I could share the link with you because the way this is going to work is um, we're essentially going to share this uh, slides, which I just shared now with you. And now we have six photos after that. And you have to vote for one of the six. So we'll put a poll in the description. So please give me a second. Uh, you uh, we, Maybe we can start the 30 second counter till then. Okay, we're back. So I have pinned um, a comment. So that's where you can find this, uh, the slides and you can find the poll as well. Unfortunately, we can only have four options. So if, if you're gonna select pick five or six, type it in the chat. Um, so yeah, so maybe we can take some time off and until then maybe we can answer some of the questions that were asked, which we didn't get before. So let's see. Well, the chat is really hyped today. So we have to scroll quite a bit, quite a bit up for that. Um, let's see. I believe Shrey Tripathi's question was taken then. Yeah, we have an actually interesting observation. Shrey Tripathi says, I really like your photo about the children of Cambodia. Is there any interesting backstory behind that? The children of Cambodia. I think he's talking about that, uh, the photo that I love, which was in my TEDx talk last year as well of the kids crying. I, I, I think it's that one that the person is talking about, if it is. Uh, yeah, it was it was amazing. It was, um, uh, again, they didn't have the right to exercise their freedom. All the other kids were playing in the field and I think their parents were working and that's why they were locked up in their homes and I was distributing sweets and candies and I heard someone crying and, and they probably were seeing all the kids getting that and it was affecting them and I ran to where I heard the cries from. And that's when I shot that uh, that photo of those tears gliding like pearls across the cheeks. Like that's what I call it poetically. Uh, it was amazing. I, I you know gave them candies through the window and they were very, very happy. And that was it. I couldn't capture their smiles, but yeah, it was. it is one of my favorite photos of Cambodia of the kids. Yeah, so really yeah, powerful. thank you for remembering it. Yes, it's a very powerful image. I really like it. Yeah, really, really an amazing photo. And yeah, so we have people putting six and seven. Um, I'm sorry, when we said freedom of speech, we didn't mean it that way. It's only one to six right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, just in case anyone's just tuning in, we have to vote for the best photo. And you can see the pinned comment has the link to the slides and the poll has one to six, actually one to four. You can put five or six in the chat if you'd like. Um, so yeah, maybe we can take up another question until then. So. Maybe we can give it five minutes or so for voting. So let's see. Yeah, it's so actually, thing. I'm looking forward to seeing what other people liked. Uh, because, yeah. uh, you know, if, if someone did not appreciate my choice or something like that, too bad because I was the judge. Uh, but I want, I really do want to see what how the others have, uh, what they have to say about the images as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really good. Um, actually, I have a question for you. And the question All is right. something related to one of the previous questions, I believe. Uh, you mentioned about social media for a cause, right? And now yes. how would, let's say, a layman or someone like maybe uh, like a normal person, how would he or she support that? So I told Janvi, right, um, today, you know, you must be walking to from your home to your place of work or place of education or anywhere you would be going around in a market and uh, you're seeing someone who is probably selling something it could be art it could be it could be as simple as daily vegetables or you know like in Bombay we have a lot of them who sell daily puri and stuff like that and and you see these guys really struggling and maybe they have a very small little stall or sitting on the road while the store across 
uh, is very fancy and people are attend to go over there and this little man is left with nothing i think social media for a cause is uh, it's as simple as putting up a story an image of the person uh, talking to that person understand thing the problem uh, that he or she is facing what is it that they need right now and bring it out i mean maybe 10 of your friends are seeing that post would definitely go to that man and no one wants you know everyone has self respect they don't want charity they don't want donation uh, they want to be recognized for their work uh, i think it's as simple as bringing out these stories making the people aware of it so they can help in that uh, and every little small contribution that you'd be making to that person is going to make a big difference right um, and we saw that i mean social media has been having such stories um, i was very lucky to have shot suman the desert princess if anyone follows my instagram they can go watch the igtv video that i've made about her, how people take advantage of her and uh, photographers were watching all this for so many years but no one really brought this topic out and it's only when someone voices it do other people get aware of it uh, so i think that that's exactly what we need we need everyone to voice out or show people the real idea with the use of great content uh, we are all done seeing beautiful landscapes and everything of course we all want to see that but why not use this for a cause correct yeah now i i do have a i can follow up to that is a very open ended wow. question so, so i yes sir um yeah i actually before i ask the question maybe i maybe got confused uh, there are actually eight options five where you can vote for seven or eight as well yes we have complete freedom of speech <laughs> so yeah the follow up question i had is so this is very open end question so you mentioned about social media for a cause right so there are some social networks that are very anonymous like 4chan and there are others which are not so anonymous let's say like facebook or so on what do you think would be a better media anonymous or non anonymous for this purpose ah uh, uh non anonymous anonymous i think what would what is your thing what is your Oh. like are there advantages and disadvantages to either is that what you were thinking about um no like it just crossed my mind that these are completely different paradigms and the fact that put here is a very noble cause so people would know where to let's say uh, like do these activities if one is clearly better than the other correct sorry i'm losing you vijay oh i'm, I'm can sorry you, can I'm... you hear me yeah yeah i can yeah okay okay Yeah, I kept losing you. Okay, so maybe I could repeat that. So what I meant to say was like these are completely two different paradigms, right? So you have anonymous and non-anonymous social media, and if one, let's say, has a clear advantage for such a cause, maybe it would be more beneficial for someone to invest their time into such a social media. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, again, when Facebook started or when Instagram started. you know platforms various reasons and now we've got everything combined right so there's fundraisers that is happening there is it's a social platform to uh, communicate with like minded people to find people of the same interests and passion and uh, i definitely you know then there are fundraiser platforms like get to where you put these stories up and you're raising money for people or you're helping people through this and everything i think everything has just come together there is no longer that instagram is only a photograph sharing platform i think we are, we are creating awareness through this as well and each of them have each of the platforms have a different audience something that i probably visit a lot more in the day is instagram and not facebook or another platform that i'm not even at on right like snap or anything like that so i think yeah using anything and everything where you have an audience is what you need mm mm-hmm. that's a pretty good way to put it i guess so i guess it's up to us to choose but i guess what what the the bottom line is no matter which social media you go for as long as the cause is good the effect will be good definitely okay so i so guess we are done counting votes 
Yes, we're done counting words, but in true typical live stream drama fashion, we have equal number of words for two particular photos. So we have equal number of words for eight and five. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Always nice to know. So I'll create a new poll okay. now. Okay, let's see and those five. photos. Uh, so let's. I'll create a new poll now, and whoever. So let's keep this open for another maybe two, three minutes or so. So guys, just vote for eight or five, whichever you like more. Just in case you just joined in, you can find that in the link in the pinned comment and you may not need to comment it here just put it in the poll that would be nice and i guess before we close maybe you can have a yeah. last question so for anyone just starting out what would you recommend as the best first photo for anyone starting out what would i recommend as the best first photo to click yeah to click ah uh. Okay, as a, so so different, right? As a portrait photographer, I would say capture someone's smile because I think that first photo of some smiling and expressing their freedom as we speak today is going to be a is going to be a memory forever. As a first photo, as a photographer, I would I would want to capture someone's smile. Uh, as a landscape mm -hmm. photographer, I would I would love to capture a waterfall. Um, and just because technically you can do a lot with that photo as well in capturing waterfall and a lot of photographers know that um so yeah so th those would be my first if i if someone was starting out with as a portrait photographer i would say just capture this uh, not only are you going to give a lot of happiness to that person when you're clicking it but uh, you're going to be happy watching it uh, as your first photo as a memory forever Correct. Yeah, I, I do personally relate to this. So the first photo I took in college was a uh, university. The next one, nice photo. So yeah, very nice. Highly recommend it. So okay, I think um, we can stop the poll now into a democratic fashion. We have a decisive verdict, and that is photo number eight. And maybe uh, that is by Ashish Gatreddy. Amazing job, well done. You win the audience poll. You are truly the fan favorite. <sighs> Okay, are we going to see the photo? Yeah, yeah, I will show you the photograph. So, give me a second, please. Yep. Yeah. This was the people's choice. This one. The kids. The yeah. kids' photo. Amazing. Congratulations, Ashish, mm -hmm. for being the people's choice. Yeah, Jiraiya Sensei says, eight is too pure, it's hard to disagree. Amazing photo, awesome. Amazing, yeah, it's really, really nice. Okay, I guess uh, we're done here. Thank you so much for coming, everyone in chat. And also thank you so much, personally, Sonali. It was really a great blast. And we hope your event does really well and the people of Rajasthan get their due recognition in time. Thank you, thank you guys. It's so much. Thank you very, very much for having me on this platform, uh, for letting me share uh, something that's very, very important to me. And uh, as soon as this goes online and we share this on social media, I want each and every one of you to help me in this cause because it's not only my problem, it is everyone's problem and we need to solve this together. Uh, it takes a village and uh, that's what we have. We have everyone who's going to help us. So thank you guys. It was absolutely amazing. A lot of fun judging this, watching photographs. Yeah. And um yeah. I'm sure you guys are enjoying the holiday. Uh, sadly, it's come on a Sunday. Independence Day on a Sunday isn't the best, but there you go. I'm sure you guys can enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah, thank you. And happy Independence Day once again. And thank yeah, you. thanks for coming. We look forward to seeing you in future events. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. -bye.